Hello allemaal and welcome to this week's episode of Tulip TV. We are here with Behind Me Habitat Island. Habitat Island is a man-made island that was made to introduce wildlife back into an urban setting. The island has vertical snags, native plants and a natural shoreline and they are hoping to attract animals back and wildlife back that has been disappearing because of all the developments in this city and in this area. Fortunately, we've spotted bald eagles and various different types of waterfowl. So it's a successful island. And here's what's coming up on the show. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. Hi there, this is Tom Byfoot reporting for Tulip TV and Dutch the Magazine. We've uh, brought our Dutch mobile way down to California from our uh, home base in British Columbia and we are uh, recording in Newark, California, which is in the Bay Area and we'll be visiting one of the biggest Dutch coffee clubs that meet here in the uh, local mall. This is an initiative that started in Surrey and Langley, BC where a large uh, groups of uh, Dutch people came together for coffee every third Wednesday of the month. Well, this is the third Wednesday of the month, and the Krant, the uh, sister magazine uh, to uh, Dutch the Magazine, which is published in Dutch every month, uh, initiated the coffee clubs, which are now meeting in malls right across North America. From here in the Bay Area, where we have the big coffee club, or so we're told, we'll find out, find out in a few minutes, um, meeting in the New Park Mall in Newark, to uh, San Francisco itself, where there's a coffee club meeting in Stone Sounds Galleria. There's a number in Canada, a number in British Columbia, Ontario. Um, there's even one in New Jersey. So uh, this is a way for Dutch people who live in North America to get together once a month. Most coffee clubs meet on every third Wednesday of the month at 10 a.m., uh, which is where we're going right now. So right at this moment, uh, a number of clubs in the Pacific time zone are just getting together. Uh, we're gonna show you some pictures. We're gonna talk to some people at the uh, New York, California Dutch Coffee Club, which is supposed to be one of the largest, but as I said, we'll find out soon. We're talking to Taya Pex, and uh, Taya is the uh, organizer of the biggest of the coffee clubs. And uh, I'm going to ask Taya, uh, how Taya, how did this uh, come about? How did you start the club? Well, omdat we in de krant hebben, had ik hier gelezen dat er zoveel koffieclubs waren. Maar wij zitten in een, in een gedeelte. We waren te ver af van iedereen. Zo so, ik dacht, waarom kunnen we zelf niet zoiets proberen? Zo so, toen heb ik. Tom gebeld, of niet, Tom geschreven naar de, van de krant en gezegd als ik een datum heb en een dag heb en een tijd en een plaats wil jij het in de krant zetten. En Tom zei, ja hoor, dat doe ik, laat me maar weten. En zo is het begonnen. Toen hadden we de eerste keer, ik had al mijn Hollandse kennissen die ik kon, had ik gevraagd om te komen op de koffie. En we hadden er 15 die dag. En vandaar is het gegroeid en ik telde er vandaag zo ongeveer 60. So dat is begonnen in uh, 2009. Hi, we're talking to Delia and Delia just came off work. Uh, she's a paramedic. You spent uh, 16 hours on the ambulances just now? 
No, it was 72, actually. 72, amazing. And anyway, you live in Fremont here, and uh, there's a Dutch coffee club. Did you even know about that? No, I didn't, actually. So, so what did you think when you walked in here this morning? I thought that's a larger group than I expected. Because <laughs> I think on Facebook there were only, I think, two RSVPs for this. So I thought, oh, it'll be quite an intimate group. As it turns out, it's quite a large group. <laughs> so so are, there, are there so many Dutch people in, uh, in the Bay Area? Why, why is it so big? Um, ik heb een idee dat iedereen in de veel mensen in de Bay Area zijn komen wonen toen ze emigreerden. Het is een klimaat dat is ja heel lekker. En uh, we hebben het best naar ons zin hier en zouden ook niet ergens anders willen wonen. Maar er zijn er meer die er zo over denken. Ja. Zo vandaar dat uh, we zijn ook lid van de Neso en Nacho. And nacho. Uh, and, and those are two Dutch societies, right? Dutch societies. And there are a lot of Indonesian people, but not all of them, of course, because I'm not. But it's, it's a Dutch, the Dutch people that pull together for some reason. And once a month we get here for the coffee. My name is Trace Bams. I'm the president of the Netherlands Society of Northern California abbreviated the NASO. The NASO is an organization that actually started in the 1960s. It's been growing very rapidly and right now our membership is about 200 members. Uh, of course the membership in itself we're all aging and we are hoping that the younger generation will eventually take over. The society at this point is actually doing all kinds of activities. One of them is a, a bazaar, a Passer uh, of course the anniversary party annual. What we also do is have uh, the Christmas party, which is also an annual event. And uh, when's the Passer Malam? The Passer Malam is in uh, Fremont, and that is in the Swiss Gardens. That's where we have our Passer Malam. Uh, you're not Dutch yourself? No. So, so where's the interest in, in the Netherlands and the Dutch come from? Oh, well, I met a Dutch man, <laughs> so you know how those things go. <laughs> and then he has a son, so um, he's actually Frisian. So it's a bit confusing because there's three languages going on there. But I picked up a little bit of Nederlands. And, and uh, so you subscribe to our magazine? I do, and I love it. It's a great magazine. I love that it's in English. Okay, that's wonderful because you do know Dutch, right? Ik spreek beetje Nederlands. Niet zo goed. Did you just learn it from um, from your friend or did you...? Yeah, just trips to Holland. I've been, I think I've been seven or eight times. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Every month the whole group uh, takes a group picture and I'm told, um, I've got uh, Thea Pex next to me, uh, is it a, a problem every month to get them all together? It is not makkelijk om ze allemaal bij elkaar te krijgen, maar ja, als ze de foto zien dan vinden ze het toch wel weer leuk. So, het is wel moeilijk, maar we krijgen ze. <laughs> so here we get it, the whole Dutch coffee club of Newark, California is getting ready for a group photo. There are a big 
coffee clubs and there are little coffee clubs and they're all gezellig. Um, this is the Gilroy Coffee Club who came uh, to uh, Newark especially for this event and we're talking to Adriana Leifeit and she is the organizer of the Gilroy California Coffee Club. Um, so this is the club? Yeah, this is the club and we're here special to you and your family to meet Oh, and... <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, where did you guys meet? In the outlet center, Gilroy outlet center. In the big hollow room in the Gilroy outlet center. So if there's any Dutch people that live too far away from Newark, uh, but would like to come to, uh, to the Gilroy Club, uh, the second Wednesday of each month, and you can meet these wonderful people. And it's always very gezellig, 10.30 in the morning. We're talking to Thea, Thea Bay, and Thea writes for the Krant, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I do and I love every minute of it. Oh, that's wonderful. When did you start writing for the Krant? Actually, I started October last year. And uh, these are just little columns, I call them tussendoortjes, in-betweens. And it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time and I'm just glad that I have a chance to, um, to do that now. So what do you write about? Basically everything. Um, I started out with flowers in my garden and I'm going to have columns about um, my dog and my family, um, regular things in life, daily activities. And, and you had an inspiration, I believe, right? It, it just kind of came falling out of the blue. I mean, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, never really had the know-how and then I got in touch with you at one point and uh, I thought that would be a good start. We're uh, talking to uh, Mariska Henneberg and she uh, is very active in one of the Dutch societies here. Could you introduce the society? Yeah, it's called the uh, Netherlands American Cultural and Heritage Organization. And uh, what do you guys do? Uh, we actually um, try to keep the Dutch community together by uh, having open houses for Dutch people uh, about once a month except for in the summertime. We uh, organize uh, Dutch American Heritage Day. We have Koning in the Ball. Okay, and and we, uh, do you have a website or a contact where we can find out more about you? Actually, uh, right now it's only uh, my email, my email and uh, the president's email address. But we are connecting with other Dutch organizations to be part of the website. Uh, SF Dutch uh, has a lot of the Dutch uh, uh, different organizations together. Uh, to find out if there's a coffee club in your neighborhood, uh, you can go to www.coffeeclub.com or to www.thecrant.ca where we have a listing of all the uh, coffee clubs. And if you would want to start a Dutch coffee club somewhere in a mall in your neighborhood, just drop us an email, editor at dutchthemag.com. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. My name is Jeff Whiting, I'm president and founder of Artists for Conservation. I started this organization about 14 years ago, uh, bringing together my interests, my passions, uh, and my community, and uh, interest in art, science, and uh, technology. We started as an online community back when the World Wide Web was just in its infancy, and have since moved into the real world. And uh, these days we're annually putting on a major annual exhibit, uh, which we're proud to say is the world's top conservation-themed art exhibit uh, that's available for tour. And we've brought it here to Grouse Mountain 
to showcase some of the, this best artwork featuring some really fascinating conservation stories uh, portrayed by some of the most talented artists from around the world. We have 500 artists from 27 countries and uh, 80 of them are represented in this year's exhibit. The, uh, the Artists for Conservation International Foundation, uh, it's, a, it's a charity and based in Canada with members from 500 members from 27 countries, all by invitation artists. Uh, our mission is to support wildlife and habitat conservation and, and environmental education through art. So we're really using art as a vehicle to enacting change, positive change in the world, and reconnecting society with nature and appreciating it. And we can only really hope to save it if we appreciate it and we understand it. And that's really why uh, where artists today have a really critical and important role in helping engage the audience emotionally and, and seeing the value of nature. We can also claim that we're probably the highest uh, exhibit in the world at 4,100 feet uh, looking overlooking Vancouver and the Pacific Ocean. Uh, this is a really special venue to be hosting uh, our annual exhibit for a number of reasons. We, we're not only surrounded by nature, we're in this amazing uh, climax forest. Uh, there are grizzly bears uh, nearby, uh, a wildlife rehabilitation and uh, endangered species uh, uh, center on the mountain, uh, and edu educational programs that are based here on the mountain. Uh, they have raptors, uh, owls, and uh, wolves at the base of the mountain. So visitors who come to Gross Mountain will see a, a lot of wildlife. And that's where it really fits well with what we're doing. We're bringing uh, the beauty of nature in an art show, in an art exhibit. So what's really special about this, and I guess that differentiates what we're doing here, that goes far beyond just an, an art show or an art exhibit, is that we are providing a lecture series, we're doing film screenings. In fact, uh, Artists for Conservation is doing an annual, uh, we've committed doing an annual documentary that focuses on art and conservation. Uh, so we'll be premiering our second documentary film here about actually art and conservation in Africa's Rift Valley. A little bit about the exhibit. The artwork that's in the exhibit, we, we produce it in a book, a hardcover book each year, as well as a, an online virtual exhibit. And now we'll have about 90, 90 artworks exactly in this year's exhibit. Each of these artworks has been juried. So our membership is a juried membership. The, the artwork within this show is juried from within that membership. So it's really cream of the cream for this year, uh, showcasing some remarkable uh, artworks. And this ranges from both paintings and sculptures, uh, wall hangings and sculptures. Uh, various different mediums, whether it's oil, acrylic, um, woodcuts. There's a there's a full range of medium. Price ranged anywhere from five hundred dollars to ninety thousand dollars. Now, what's also separates this show from many other shows is it's also a benefit. So it's a juried exhibit, but at the same time, uh, each artwork benefits a conservation organization of the artist's choice. So. Every artist dedicates their piece and pledges to contribute a portion of the sale of that piece to a conservation organization of, of their choice. So we're really trying to provide a platform for the artists to become spokespeople and champions for the causes that are, their, that are closest to their hearts. actually have uh, several uh, very talented artists from both Germany and, and uh, Holland. From the Netherlands, we have Ria Winters is attending our show. It's, we have several Dutch painters, but Ria Winters in particular, which she is going to be attending the event, uh, volunteering and uh, offering lectures and uh, engaging as well with, uh, with some of our youth programming. Uh, Ria has uh, spent time in the field. She participated in our Flag Expeditions program, which it's a, uh, a program where we support artists 
getting out into really remote places in the uh, on in the planet, working with conservation organizations and field scientists in these places. And Ria went to Mauritius, and she'll be talking a little bit about her expedition uh, to Mauritius and studying some of the endangered bird life there. And, uh, Ria is an extremely talented artist uh, who loves uh, bird life in particular, although she she paints a range of uh, of subjects. And she'll be coming in and uh, making a presentation on that. So what's really interesting about this is it's much more than an art show. Uh, we've got the exhibit itself of 90 art, original artworks, but around that the programming includes wine and cheese uh, opening where uh, visitors will get to meet the artists. We've got adult workshops. We're running five adult workshops that are being given by visiting artists from around the world. And uh, as well as workshops aimed at young the youth, uh, grades 3 to 10. Uh, in addition, we're running a lecture series and screening four different films during the event. So over this 10 days, we've got a lot happening. We're packing in a tremendous amount with uh, 18 lecturers and art demonstrations that are going on through the chalet. So anyone who comes up to the event can only be uh, immersed in nature and art. And that's really the experience we're trying to, to create for everyone. Hi there, this is Tom Byfoot, editor of Dutch the Magazine, and today I want to talk about the Euro. You know that uh, currency that they introduced in Europe about a decade ago and that's uh, causing havoc in the world's financial markets? Well, we're standing by the sidelines here in North America, but some of us still have some holdings or, or maybe a little bit of money left in Europe, and we see our money getting worth less and less and less. What are you guys playing at? The Euro has failed, let's face it. Okay, we've got a bailout for Spain and we're all very happy and we've got a bailout for Greece and we're even happier. But sooner or later, and this could be a year, less than a year, or maybe two or three or a decade, the Europe's going to fail. And the thing that I don't like about it is the uncertainty because if there's something that financial markets and equity markets don't like, it's uncertainty. So let's bite the bullet and just get rid of the thing. Now, I don't propose that we get rid of it the way a lot of people are talking about and first get rid of Greece and then eventually Spain will follow and Italy will follow. No, it's the stronger economies, the healthier markets that should withdraw. And what I think is that it would be a good idea if the people of the Netherlands and Germany and maybe Austria and Finland would say, let's exit from the euro, introduce our new currency and that would give the euro area the opportunity to devalue their currency and create a healthier situation. It would take away the uncertainty in the financial markets and it would create a situation in which there would be a stronger European currency in the north again. Now, there's one thing to watch for though, especially for the Dutch uh, and, and maybe the smaller nations. Uh, to make a currency union work, there's got to be fiscal and monetary integration. And with the group I just proposed, that means the dictates are going to come from Berlin and Frankfurt. And that's something you have to think about very carefully. As I said, we're on the sidelines here. I don't have to decide that for you. I live in Canada and my currency is the Canadian dollar. Uh, but you have to decide whether you want to go forward with your own currency as the Netherlands, closely tied again as in the past to the German currency, or whether you want to go with a North European currency union. And this was Tom Byfoot for Dutch the Magazine and Tulip TV. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. I'm here at Amsterdam Airport Schiphol. This place is amazing. You could spend an entire day here. First of all, they have a grocery store. They've got marshmallows. You can sip tea in a giant teacup. You can play slots for crying out loud. Relax by a futuristic fireplace. 
You can look at priceless art in the airport museum. How much is this one? You can buy confusing souvenirs. I don't get it. You can play in the children's forest. There's even a library in this place. Where's your Justin Bieber section? Even their garbage cans are pretty. <sighs> the only thing you can't do is go to Cinnabon. They don't have one. I found out the hard way. Does anyone know if they have a suggestion box? We hope you enjoyed the show this week. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And remember, we're independently produced, so rely solely on viewers like you. If you'd like to help us, please go to our website and click on Donate. We hope you'll watch us again next week. Tot ziens!